Uh, just to say today, I am going to be talking about uh, emotional burnout. Uh, burnout is something that a lot of people might um, experience. And I'm going to just talk briefly about how it is that you can tell if you're heading down burnout route and also the things that you can do to help yourself. Uh, I think with many more people working from home and having to juggle family life, um, sometimes it can be quite difficult to to work out the boundaries between our working life and our, and our personal life. Um, also during times where there is prolonged stress, um, just coming from our environment, this is also a factor. So I'd like to just talk about burnout today because I think it's something that we are really help to know about and catch it before you you get it. I've had complete burnout at some uh, at a point in my life, and when it hit me, it was one of the hardest things I'd ever experienced. And enabling myself to be able to get back into life and be able to function in a way that was enjoyable and productive for me took a lot of hard work and it was a real wake up call to me to show me that I'm not superwoman. I'm not a super person who can just have everything chucked at me and I have to be able to handle everything. I learnt my limits, but I think what would have been much more helpful for me and those around me and for my work would have been to acknowledge that I was burning out as opposed to when I was flat down on my face go, oh, I can't go anymore. So I'm hoping just today will help you to recognise maybe if you're having showing the signs and being able to start making differences within your life to backtrack yourself from it. So burnout is when you're sort of emotionally, physically, completely, and mentally, completely devoid of energy and completely drained and overwhelmed. When we're stressed, we might feel overwhelmed about what is being uh, thrown at us. We might feel we don't have enough time to achieve everything. But when we feel burnt out, we have absolutely no capacity to be able to deal with the different uh, responsibilities and the things that we need to do we can become completely emotionally disconnected or you can become sort of overly um, affected emotionally by everything around you. You might completely lose interest in what it is that you're doing. It, you might feel that at no point do you have any energy. So even if it's you've had a good night, you know, even though you, when you wake up in the morning, you don't feel as though you've had any sleep. You can also be much more prone to getting illnesses because your immune system has completely uh, has just completely shut off. You can also just lose interest in socialising, in your friends, in doing anything creative. You know, even what I found, I love to exercise, but even that I couldn't be bothered. I could not be bothered with anything. Everything just felt like it was going to drain. All those things that before had boosted me and made me feel great and be able to deal with the various um, challenges and responsibilities that I have in life. Those things that really used to help me release my stress started to feel like a real burden, felt like hard work and I just couldn't be bothered. And I, it wasn't even the fact, you know, it wasn't the fact that I was being lazy. I just had no capacity, no reserves to be able to do anything extra than the stuff that had to be done. So if you're starting to notice that you have these feelings, if you start noticing these sensations, it's really important that you don't just think I've got to battle through and just ignore it and it'll go away. These are the signs that your body has had enough and it needs to be nurtured. You need to be nurtured. And the first put point of call really is to acknowledge to yourself that you need to do something about it and it's not because you're a failure it's not because you're not good enough and it's not because you should be doing better 
it's just because you are doing too much from too many directions. And that is okay to be able to acknowledge that to yourself. It's the right thing to do. Because once you start acknowledging that you need to start making changes, that is when those changes can start to be put in place. So if you are feeling like that, the first thing to do is to reach out, speak to someone. So if you've got uh, someone at work that you can chat to, speak to them, let them know how you're feeling, tell them that at the moment you're struggling, maybe start making changes in your life, in your personal life, have a look to see where the drain is. Are you not getting enough support? Is it that you're not asking for enough support? Sometimes we do have people around us who want to help, but we aren't delegating or we aren't asking for help. We're just making that assumption it's we should be doing it. Are you being too much of a perfectionist? Are you expecting everything that you do to be absolutely perfect and absolutely right, even though you've got loads and loads of things that you need to do? Be truthful to yourself. Just work out what is important. Maybe work out the things which aren't necessarily as important. The way I first started getting myself back together was I stripped away everything that was unnecessary in my life. And I'm not saying that it was about um, not acknowledging what was important, but the way I started was only doing the things I absolutely had to do. So I had to make sure I was there for my children. I had, to, I had a job to do. But all those extra things that sort of were in my life, I just had to start saying, no, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. That will have to stop now. I can pick it up later. Because even though you strip everything away at the beginning, it doesn't mean they can't come back in. It doesn't mean that you can't start reintroducing. But the important thing is to start re-energising yourself, to start nurturing. It's about looking after yourself and being kind to yourself. So bringing in exercise. So the thing I did is I stopped um, running because running was draining me and I took up cycling and I took up yoga and I took up Pilates. So things which weren't sucking the energy, but were making me feel better, that were making me stronger. So I altered those. Um, eat really look at your food. Make sure that you're eating really good, healthy foods, good protein, good fats. Really important. You know, get some fish. Lots of oily fish is really good. Nuts, seeds. Uh, making sure your meals are balanced so you're not having lots of processed sugary foods which put more stress on the body. Really just ask yourself all of the time, is, is this going to be nurturing me? Is this going to be helping me? You know, reducing alcohol, reducing caffeine, all of these things. I know it probably is your go to, it can be your go to, but actually in the long term, it doesn't help your system. Looking to connect with people, having fun, you know, going for a walk with a, a good friend, trying to socialise in the best way that you can. All of these things help nourish and build you and starting to recognise those have tos, those shoulds. Are you doing certain things because you feel you should do as opposed to the fact it needs to be done or um, it's something that you want to do? It's really good to start to think about that, taking some time out for yourself to be quiet, uh, whether it's doing some meditating, going for a lovely walk in nature by yourself, taking up mindfulness and ultimately getting some really, really good sleep. Sleep well, make sure that your quality of sleep is good. I talk about sleep an awful lot because if you don't get a good night's sleep and it's not just about the length of it, it's about the quality, that is when your body heals. That is when the adrenaline can stop flowing through the system. When you get that good deep sleep, this means your body is able to re is able to nourish and it's able to rebuild and it's able to fully relax. So doing breathing techniques are really good. You know, doing the 7-Eleven breathing um, to looking into various mindfulness techniques. Have a look at various videos that I've talked about. You know, there is, lots of information are in the videos to sort of help bring into your life. So emotional burnout is an enormous, enormous subject. But I feel that it's just important that you recognise. And if you are 
I'm not at burnout yet, but you're noticing that you are feeling like you're being pulled in all directions and your stress levels are rising. Grab it before it gets to the point of burnout. Grab it at the time where you still have the capability to make the difference because we need to enjoy our lives. And I don't mean enjoying our lives in the sense of be really hedonistic and just go and play on the beach for the rest of your life, which would be very nice, but it's not about being that woohoo happy all the time. But if what you're doing in your life isn't giving you a sense of purpose or a sense of meaning or a sense of achievement at the end of the day if you seem to be looking at your life as a big to-do list and that's it then there's something in there that means that it would be really beneficial for you to start acknowledging that and having a look at that and obviously you can't change everything but if you can start with just one thing just one idea in which you can change to enable yourself to start enjoying your life a bit more then those feelings of stress can start to reduce and the pressure on your body starts to reduce. And those other things then, the, the, the have tos, which we do have to, and we all have to wash up and clean, clean ourselves and do our clothes and things. Suddenly they stop being annoying and they stop being um, overwhelming because you've got other things to be thinking about. You know, the, the reaction in our bodies are different. So if this is something that is affecting you, maybe have a research on the subject and start to think about the different ways that you can start looking after yourself a little bit more and start reversing that high level of stress or that high level of burnout. Take care. I'll see you next week. Bye.